Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the charming Takahashi TS40 from 1974. The Takahashi company had only been around for about less than 10 years at this point, and they made their first expedition into small, portable, equatorial tracking telescope mounts. Astrophotography was a big deal in Japan, and a lot of uh, Japanese astrophotographers wanted something very portable they could put into a small package, put on their back in a backpack, uh, take a tripod and a camera with them, and then go out to the field to do tracking uh, with, a, with a camera. So that's what this is for. It's aimed at that particular market. It's got a lot of really interesting features and some interesting strange little omissions or strange little features that you'll see. Um, but it's very, very compact, very charming. It comes with this guide scope. It's integral to the whole thing is this guide scope. Now the guide scope, it's a 40 millimeter guide scope. There's the focusing. Your focusing on this is um, real primitive. You just do it like so and that's, that's what you get. And it would focus about there with this. This is a star diagonal and a special guiding eyepiece. You don't need anything real precise for this because you're going to piggyback a 50 millimeter or 85 millimeter lens, something like that. Uh, for a long exposure shot, this is going to be something maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes of guiding, hand guiding with this thing. Uh, I used to do that kind of thing and it's tedious. Believe me, you're staring at this thing. You've got a camera on here and you've got the shutter open and hope for the best that you've got a, a good shot coming out of there and you don't mess up the guiding uh, for, for 20 minutes or so. Anyway, we'll talk about this wonderful, charming, interesting piece of Takahashi history. Let me give you a good look at how this mount works. The guide scope too could be removed, although I'm not sure if you'd ever put anything else on there, but that's the way that works. The nice thing about this clamping system is that it gives you a way of adjusting this way and that way. So you have a pretty good deal of flexibility added with that. Um, first of all, let me show you again. Here you go. Counterweight. This is nicely made. Very nicely made. Now, in terms of how you can arrange this, You've got, you don't have any slow motion in terms of the declination, but you have a lock right here. You can rearrange how the camera goes pretty, you have a good deal of flexibility. You have to have this wrench. If you lose that wrench, heaven help you, you're doomed. Anyway, if you, you know, you can use that to loosen this. You can, of course, change the orientation of the camera like so. You can also rotate this. So you've got a huge amount of flexibility with regard to how you get that camera aimed on there. So that'll be more than enough flexibility to do the job as long as you don't lose your wrench. Let's take this off for now. I want to show you something else about this. When you're going to set this up for polar alignment Takahashi, just a year or so before, had come out with the um, TS-65P, which was the first mount that had in it, maybe it's the first Takahashi mount that had in it the, the um, polar alignment scope. This one's got a polar alignment scope also. Nice little polar alignment scope inside there. And let's see, I'll rotate this a little bit so you can see. So then you just look through here, whoop, don't loosen your tripod, look through there, get a good sighting on where Polaris is, offset it for the proper amount. You can get a very precise uh, polar alignment here. Of course, for shooting a 50 millimeter lens, well, I guess for 15, 20 minutes, you'd want it as accurate a polar alignment as you could possibly get. Anyway, so that's... And look at how well this is made. I mean, this is <laughs> made like it's uh, for a Sherman tank. I want to 
going to show you something very interesting about that. Suppose you're trying to polar align this, um, and you want to get it all set up and aimed at Polaris. So you've got uh, this, and you've got this. And you can use those two things to set your polar alignment. If you're, you're going to be somewhat close here, but if you're not close, or if you're on a mount that doesn't have that, that feature, the ball, the, the head, you're going to have to loosen this. And good luck. <laughs> now you've got this thing swinging around like this. Very tricky. <laughs> I was able to pull or align this. I didn't have it on this map, but I was able to pull or align it the other night. And I uh, took a shot or two with it, just for fun, just to see if I could do it. And uh, <laughs> it was an adventure getting that set. Of course, it doesn't have to be ultra precise. It just has to be sort of close for that to work. Let's take a close look at this mount. This mount did not normally come with a clock drive. However, you could get one, and I don't have one of the original clock drives. Here's another one, a later one, that works. This is not that much later anyway, it's about, it's the same decade, 1980s I believe. Anyway, so here you have, um, and they're still using some, I, I think they used these up for quite some time. Anyway, here's, uh, now here's your this is a clutch. You can see that, that spins freely as long as that's loose. When you tighten this down, it tightens that down to that. Now all we have to do is drive this gear here. Now this is where it gets interesting. This is the motor that goes on there. Now this motor drive goes on here like that. This goes through here. Kind of a strange looking configuration, but it works. Let's see if I can make sure you've got a good look at that. Now this comes down and it engages those gears. Like so. And now you have it all set up. Here you have freewheeling now and now you lock it down and it's it's hooked up to the motor let me rotate that a little bit and show you what that looks like from various angles now for guiding here you have um, push button control with fast and stop. This goes into a battery pack, a simple battery pack, a few D cell batteries. That's all it takes to drive this. Here's everything I need to go on an expedition. Got my tripod, my camera, all sorts of goodies, lunch, maybe snack. Here's my TS40 mount. in a nice leather pouch, all packed in there. I am ready to go. 
I thought you might enjoy seeing the old versus the new. This is the TS40, and it does exactly the same thing as this. This is a modern Skywatcher. Uh, the only thing this one does that that one doesn't do is hook up to your iPhone. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same game. And of course, you can use this with a modern DSLR like this. No problem. The TS40 mount dates from 1974. In 1981, Takahashi produced this thing. It was called the uh, Sky Patrol. Uh, in Japanese, it was the original was Sky Cancer, but uh, it's translated in, in English to usually be Sky Patrol. So the Sky Patrol in 1981 is almost identical. You can see these castings down here are identical. Everything here is quite identical until you get up here to that general vicinity. Um, the integral guide scope is now gone. Instead you have this and here we have a place for the guide scope. Here's the new version of the guide scope. It's the same scope uh, with the yellow paint job. It can go on here. And then you have this mechanism locks. Now here's one thing that's different here. You have a declination slow motion. It's only a tangent slow motion, so you get, but you get a little bit of declination slow motion here. This is a new addition. And um, of course now you can put a ball head on here put a camera straight on there of course but it's probable that you're going to want to have a ball head for the flexibility put a ball head on there and camera so now you can aim this thing just about any place you want to go you've also got some flexibility with the guide scope because you can loosen this up use your wrench to loosen this up and move this around of course you have all sorts of flexibility in this regard also you can change this to be pretty much wherever you might want it to be so you've got a good deal of flexibility here I would say nearly infinite flexibility here with regard to how you frame your shot and how you uh, you what guide star you use so that's 1974 and 1981. Just for the sake of comparison, I've now added the Takahashi Space Boy in, just to show you the difference between these mounts. Uh, this one came along in 1985, so this is uh, just a few years after the Sky Patrol. And it's, but it's a whole different ballgame. This is very much the emphasis here is on astrophotography, uh, a bit more serious this can hold a larger telescope and so forth anyway I'm gonna make a whole video about this I hope that you'll watch that when you get a chance I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Takahashi TS 40 thank you very much for watching